Hey everybody, Nikki D here, ready to make you one of our favorites. If it's an Instant Pot, it's almost always a favorite. But this is a quick and simple chicken recipe. If you're rushed for time, if you want something that tastes hearty, it's a comfort food, it reminds you of grandma, because this reminds me of my grams. How about a nice chicken with rice recipe? Uh, rice, yum. I happen to use a jasmine rice for this. I use a brown rice. Believe it or not, there is a brown jasmine rice, and I just love that little bit of a nutty flavor, and I love the texture of jasmine rice. Uh, some chicken thighs, we use our uh, breast uh, skins off, but you don't have to. You can use chicken breast too. Chicken, chicken's good. I just like the fact that a thigh has a little bit more uh, taste to it, so I use the thighs. Quarter two tomatoes. Chop up three carrots. Two cups of rice. I used eight cloves of garlic, because you guys know how I feel about garlic. You can use six, don't use less than six. Oh, my pot is steaming. I'm going to go ahead and pop these in while I'm telling you what else is in it uh, and get them sautéing. So you want to sauté your chicken thighs. Uh, the whole recipe is on the blog at fivedog.farm and you can uh, download the recipe there. It really is tasty. I, uh, I made this, I always test my recipes first and I kind of wanted something that just reminded me of my grams and, and this was it. Uh, the rest of the items are a tablespoon and a half of soy sauce, one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, and some tomato paste. And what really reminds me of my grams is the bay leaf. We had a bay tree in our backyard. And as a kid growing up, you go out to the bay leaf tree and pick a bay leaf, and it went in almost any stew, soup, pot roast, pork roast, you name it, spaghetti sauce. I, I don't even think I can make spaghetti sauce without bay in it. Uh, and it was just a staple. And not a whole lot of people seem to use it. You know, I just, I don't know why, but it just seems to be one of those things that a lot of people don't use. So I love bay leaf. Put it in. If you don't have it, that's okay. Don't worry about it. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this chicken all sauteed up. I'm gonna come back, I'm not gonna make you sit through all this because it takes a little bit. And when we come back, I will go ahead and put the other ingredients in. One note, when you go to flip your chicken, salt and pepper it a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna slice up this onion. We'll be right back. Gigi. <laughs> she smelled it. <laughs> she decided to come oh, yeah. see what's cooking. <laughs> so, chicken and rice. So we've got this browned off. Now when you're going to see me take it out, if you're looking closely, no, the chicken's not cooked all the way full. All I was trying, all the way through, all the way full, <laughs> all the way through. Uh, because the pressure cooker is going to take care of that. We just wanted to get a nice brown on it. Now we're going to get the thighs out of here. And then we're going to get our shirt dirty. <laughs> and uh, then we're going to add all the things that makes this taste like graham. We are, as I said before, a big garlic family. I think that came from graham. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. There's barely anything she didn't cook with garlic. Garlic was an ingredient in just about everything. If they may use the chicken more things for daily. Certainly. Your grandma always, when she made rice pudding, put the bay leaves in it. That's right. She baked it in the oven. It gives such a I forgot flavor. about that. She did. And I haven't done that. And thank you, Mom. I will do that. <laughs> I appreciate it. All right. So what are we going to do next? We want to go ahead and toss in that sliced onion that I was talking about. One onion. Give that a little stir around. So what we're doing is we're, we're picking up all of that lovely brown goodness, the best part, I think, of, of any meal. I'll tell you what, if I could, I'd brown everything, give everybody else the protein, grab a piece of bread, <laughs> and just have the gravy with all of the glazing and everything, because that's my favorite part. <laughs> I just love that. But bread and I don't get along, so I don't do that. 
<laughs> All right, so we're still in saute mode. We're sauteing the onions, and they're starting to pick up that, that yummy goodness down here, so we'll do this a little bit longer. Graham cooked for our family. My grandmother lived with us, my mom's mom, and she cooked for our family for years. Oh, yeah. At least 25 years. I grew up by her side learning how to make all kinds of yummy things, and she's the one person I know that can make a fruit cake taste good. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm going to, I actually figured out how to recreate her, her fruit cake. Lots of brandy. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember as a kid, I got to be in charge of, of kneading the dough, and she kept pouring this stuff in. So yeah, she used brandy, I used bourbon, potato, potato. Okay, so you're going to put your six to eight cloves of garlic in and, and kind of get the aromatics out of your garlic. There we go. Uh, the other thing we're going to want to do is put in our tomato paste. Now, it's a, a tablespoon. My tomato paste looks a little weird. I'll tell you why. What I did when I first tried out this recipe to see what I liked and what I, what I didn't like, uh, and there wasn't much I didn't like, uh, was I threw the tomato paste in the freezer, in the whole can, thinking, oh, we're gonna make a spaghetti sauce real soon, no big deal. Not so much, and I ended up not wanting to open another can of tomato paste, so I scraped out a tablespoon. Don't do what I did. Take your tomato paste out of the can, put it in an ice cube tray that's about a tablespoon, freeze it, pop it out, and you're not gonna be doing what Nikki D did by tomato paste carving, because that was just silly. So, there's my story on tomato paste. <laughs> So kind of get that going in the pan too. All right. Then what you're gonna wanna do is take a half a cup, you don't have to. Take a half a cup, you can do chicken stock, and when I say you don't have to, I use white wine, in this case white vermouth, because again, Graham's always cooked with wine. So that's something our family does. You could use a half a cup of chicken stock, that's fine. But you wanna deglaze, so in goes the white vermouth, white wine, or chicken stock, whatever you prefer. So now we're gonna do a real good elbow grease job on getting the rest of all that yumminess out of there. It smells so good. Doesn't that just, oh, it just takes me right back. What time is it? Takes me right, yeah. <laughs> it's not time to eat yet, but it's getting close. Thank goodness for the Instant Pot, it makes it quick. You know, something like this would have simmered for quite some time or uh, on, on the stove top. In this case, doing it all in one pot and pressure cooking it, it's gonna be done in about a half an hour between the uh, cooking time of only seven minutes and the, the 12 minute natural release, we're good. So I'm gonna throw in my, my tasty backgrounds, my uh, soy sauce and Worcestershire sauce. Uh, true story, every time I go to the store, if I only have one bottle of Worcestershire, 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 Worcestershire sauce left, uh, Mr. Blue Jeans always makes fun of me because I immediately grab a, two more bottles. I, if I open, the last bottle, there are going to be two more right away behind it. I adore Worcestershire. Oh, yeah. I put it in very flavorful dips. I'll cook it. I, I put it in almost everything. Sort of like bay leaf, which you're going to put in now too. So pop your bay leaf in there. Okay, so we're going to let that cook down a little bit. We've got our deglazing going on. We've got all the yummies picked up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the chicken that we had had and we're going to layer it. You want to do it in this order. And again, the recipe will be on the blog. So you can go ahead and, and, and download that recipe from 5 Farm. So layer your chicken back on the bottom. Rice recipes with the Instant Pot are sometimes a little tricky. I have had that nasty four letter word crop up in my life with the Instant Pot. The word is burn. I don't like that word because burn usually means inedible although I've been able to save it a couple of times, and it means a waste of food. Two things I don't like. So make absolutely sure you use all of the liquids in any Instant Pot recipe that has rice in it. It's really important. It's usually a one-to-one -one ratio with rice. One cup rice, one cup liquid, two cups rice, two cup liquid. It's easy to remember. Um, for some reason, I had made a recipe one time, and I put one cup of rice, and I put about four cups of liquid. I do not know what happened. It's still burnt. I got very upset. It was really, really a mess. So, I am putting in one and a half cups of chicken stock. 
on top of the half cup of wine that I put in. So that's going in. My saute has just turned off, which is fine because we're not going to be sauteing this anyway. So there we go. And then you're going to want to go ahead and put your carrots in. Layer those there, your three carrots. Geez. Let's hit cancel. <laughs> Didn't want to cancel, go figure. So, okay, so we've got our carrots in. Uh, well, let's go ahead and put in our rice. You could probably put the rice in and then put the stock on top. That way you're sure that the rice gets covered with liquid, but you know. The Instant Pot was, was beckoning, so there you have it. Layer your quartered tomatoes on top. You don't have to chop them because by the time this is done, they're going to fall apart anyway when you go to scoop it out. So you don't have to go to the extra effort of chopping up the tomatoes. These are the last that we have from the farm. It's getting cold out there. Tomato time is almost done. The green onions are for sprinkling on top when we're finished. Put in, if you have some basil, if you have oregano, if you want to put in both, if you want to put in neither, I have a little oregano, bless you, me. I am out of basil, so we're going to put that in. And then what you're going to want to do is cover your top, set it, uh, seal, set it for um, pressure cooking for on high for seven minutes. And then you want to do a natural release for 12, which means you do not do a quick re release by opening the pressure valve. You leave it just as is. Set your timer for 12 minutes after you have finished your pressure cooking. And then after 12 minutes, you can go ahead and release and then open it up and see some yummy goodness that we're going to do when we come back. You still hungry? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> okay, good. So our chicken, grandma's chicken with rice is finished. Mm, smelling good. Yummy. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. So you can see no burn sign. Delicious. So what you want to do is kind of just fluff it up a little bit. Get that rice and everything mixed in. This is where your tomatoes kind of fall apart really. And uh, if you like more tomato, put in more tomato. If you like more carrots, put in more carrots. It's not a problem. You can do that. As you stir it around here, you can break up your chicken so it comes into pieces. Or you can be careful, work around your chicken bits and, and leave them in, in larger pieces. I kind of like them broken up myself. Are you getting both hands ready, Gigi? No, I'm getting a ladle. Oh, that's probably a good idea. I wasn't thinking. All right, Gigi to the rescue. <laughs> okay, so get a ladle <laughs> or have Gigi get you a ladle. Take out a little bit. Here you go. Yeah, that's looking good. And then, optional, a little bit of green onion. Would you like some green onion? Okay, a little bit of green onion on top, if you like. I'm a hot sauce person, so I'll probably be putting hot sauce on this later because this is dinner tonight. <laughs> All right, let's see. What, now it's steaming hot, but we're going to see what we think. Oh, that chicken just, look at that, it just falls apart. Oh. It just falls apart. Mm. Mm. Oh. Delicious. Yeah, so flavorful. It's hard, to, it's hard to place the flavors, and that's not always a bad thing, but you know that that Worcestershire and that soy sauce is in the background giving it a heartiness that wouldn't be there if you didn't put that in. Yeah. Now you could add more salt, with especially with rice or potato recipes. Sometimes a little extra mm -hmm. salting is necessary. In this case, I used. Perfect. It. Thank you. I used a chicken so stock that wasn't unsalted, so I think we're good. I just salted the salt and pepper the chicken when it was sautéing, and I I think we're good there. Absolutely. Mm. Oh, it's gonna be a good dinner tonight. Okay, sorry. I'm <laughs> hungry. It's been a big day, but I'm hungry. Fantastic. And I really like the bit of a crunch that the green onions lend to it. Even though it has onion in it, that crunch and the, the green color, you know us would be good in here. 
peas. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love peas. So good. you can throw those in too if you happen to have some. So there you have it. Uh, grandma's, as good as grandma's chicken and rice, the recipe will be up on the blog at fivedog.farm. If you like this recipe, if you like the channel, Gigi and I would love you to subscribe, hit like, make a comment, let us know that you're you're out there, really, really enjoy doing these for you. And in the words of a world famous chef, bon appetit! <laughs> My hero. <laughs> So you all have a great day. Hope you make this. Let us know if you do. This is Nikki D and Gigi. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> I love Julia Child. <laughs> I didn't pack the chicken first. I should have packed the chicken. I'm not going to the chicken. <laughs> chicken. <laughs> oh, this is so good. Absolutely perfect.